This is another video about making your own font icons from SVG files. In the previous video, I showed you how to make uh, your own font icons or glyph icons from an SVG file made in a vector-based program like Illustrator and using a service like IcoMoon uh, to turn that into a font family you could upload to your service and use server and use on your website. At the end of that video, I said I was going to compare this service to fantastic.me, which is one of the first ones I found out about that I still really like, and compare the differences, and it's going to help illustrate some things to be aware of when working with glyph icons or font icons. So you could go with IcoMoon, which I recommend, and you could go with fantastic.me, which is another great service. If I haven't made the case for using font icons, watch this video. It's hilarious. It'll prove the point. So like IcoMoon, we're going to log in and much like the other service, we are going to make a new font right here. I say client name. Let's make a new font and we're going to call it, oh, we're going to modify this font. We're going to call it, um, we're going to keep with our teeth. We're going to call it the dentist is my name. And again, as I said, don't use the class prefix of icon because it's too generic. It could conflict with other CSS. Let's call it not PJF because I use it the other one. Let's just call it dentist. And we're going to save this and we are going to add some icons. Like the other service, it comes with so many free uh, icon families. There's font awesome. Um, oh, that's interesting. But this version only has 360, not like the 400 plus it's on their site right now. Um, but you could add more. We could add more icons. We could activate these premium ones, or we could activate all these other ones that come with it. Nasty icons is a hilarious font set. But I want to upload my own, so we're going to import icons. And we're going to import the SVG files we made. Three complete. It's down here. It's making them in an icon set called New Set that we're going to change the name of right now. Going home. Here's my new set. I want to call this. Let's call the name of our client, which is the dentist. And we're going to choose all three and we're going to publish these. You could publish these to Icon Font Cloud, which is similar to Adobe Type Cloud if you do that, use that service. But instead, we're going to just install it on our computer. Uh, and again, so there's a, the CSS prefix that we used. Show and Finder, bring the dentist, open it up. And what's inside is, as we expect, a C, uh, CSS sheet and a font family called the dentist. So opening this up, in comparison to the one you saw in the other video, this has some more information in it because something that uh, Fantastic, Fantastic does, it's kind of neat, is you have the choice of calling up these icons by their CSS class or what they call character mapping, which is just an extra attribute called data icon. And that's really cool. So it's data icon A or B, C. Uh, I think it's obvious that using the class is a bit more intuitive because you can actually just write the name of the word instead of remembering what the letter is. So you have your choice. So as such, the CSS file here is larger. So using you can use a class or you can use data. We'll stick with class. All right, well, I want to add this to my server. I'm going to copy and paste this into the custom font file I made before in the other video, and I'm just going to put it on the end. Uh, and again, if you didn't, if this isn't if this isn't clear why, I recommend you watch the other video where I made it in the first place. But because I use different class prefixes, here's PJF and here's dentist, I'm not going to run into trouble. Save that. Now let's make sure that uh, my all my fonts are in the directory. So bringing those over to the directory I made in the other video. There we go. Make sure I push all those to my server. And let's rebuild the CSS file. And yeah, and push it to my server. Okay, going back to the test page I made before, 
we are going to put in our new icons right beside it. So say I tag class equals, I think I said dentist tooth. And close that I tag. All right, let's save that draft. If I did everything right, it's going to pop up. Oh, it didn't pop up. I got a letter B. All right, let's figure out why. Inspect elements. It says it did not find these. Oh, yes, something I forgot to do. I added my dentist font, but I, I told it the wrong directory. I lied to my style sheet, and it did not forgive me. It's actually in this directory. Save that. Prepo, my precompiler tells me I am a success, which is nice. Upload my new style sheet. Let's go check this out again. There, there's my tooth. Very cool. Um, right off the bat, this tooth is looking a bit different. Okay, well, let's go and add another icon. And copy the dentist. And this time we're going to show the family one. Save draft. Upload this. Now, here's a big difference. You see the size of this icon compared to the size of the icon in the same family compared to the previous one. So these two over here were made by, um, made over by Ico Moon, and these ones were made in Fantastic. Now, the reason this one, the font looks smaller, is it's actually. It's actually the same width, or rather it should be a yeah, 39, 39. This is something that the fantastic.me does. It gives priority to the width of it, but I feel in the majority of cases, you're gonna be looking at the height of it because this I feel this one looks out of place in comparison to that tooth. If you don't, it's all subjective, but this is my opinion. Um, the other thing that's kind of weird is see the 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 base is this base over here is lined up with the bottom of that one, but this one's floating much higher. Well, let's explore that. Uh, as I said, the priority is given to the width. So really we should be comparing it to this tooth over here. Now, when I inspect elements, we see here that there's all this extra space below this tooth. Like where is this coming from? If I look at the before, yeah, that's, why I ex that's what I expect. The tooth is only that big. So where's all this space coming from? Well, let's go delete that fam, the extra family one. Try not to breathe into the mic. So maybe you already have guessed it, but it all has to do with line height. These glyph icons are fonts after all. So if I inspect element, I look at here, what's its space come doing underneath it? Well, if there was a G beside it, it's making a bit more sense because the actual font can dip way below that baseline. Um, you know, you have the hanging parts of the letters like on G's and P's. Oh, what are those called? Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, anyways, but this isn't a behavior we see with the other one. Uh, if mousing over there, we see it's flush to the bottom. This has to do with a CSS that's, that kind of comes built in with how they're made. There is a way around this. Now, what could we do to this fantastic? Well, I'm gonna come over to the inspector. I'll bring this down beside it. The first thing that I could do is I could adjust the line height. So I could say a line height of 0 0.75. Now that hasn't changed anything in itself, but what I can do now is change the vertical alignment. And I'm gonna say negative 15%. And right away it dropped down. Negative 15, there isn't a, an exact science going on here. This is just going on by experience. But I, I can move this around and now I can shift the baseline around. But I feel minus 15% is what works well. So if I mouse over the element now, I still the line height's still all the way down there. Now, is that a problem? 
it depends. Like visually, it looks fine. The actual space it's taking up is still that. So let's change its display. And we're going to change it from display to inline block. Now when I mouse over, it takes up only the amount of space that the actual icon does. So if you're going to use Fantastic and you're wondering why, I'm going to turn those off. Your icons are sitting higher than you'd like them to. Well, you just need to apply a little bit of extra CSS. And the little bit of CSS really isn't that big of a deal because I could copy all of this and just go into my font CSS file, add them, add the CSS right to this class at the bottom. And because it's a cascading style sheet, I'm going to overwrite what comes before it. There we go. Now he's sitting more aligned where I expect him to. Super easy fix. So you could use fantastic.me. You could use Ico Moon. I prefer Ico Moon because I really want my icons to be the same height instead of the same width. I feel that's more important. So and that's just a bit of background on uh, using fonts. Beware of the line height, whether it's going to be aligned to the top or whether it's going to be aligned to the bottom or whether you can step in there and put a little negative 15%. The last thing I want to talk about, which I didn't talk about in the other video, was I'm using class, or you can use data icon. Another option is for these font icons, you come in and you just say, you know what, I'm using this font family and O. O means open tooth. That way when there's an O, an open tooth is going to be printed out on the screen. I recommend against this method for accessibility reasons. If someone is visually impaired or hard of seeing and is using a screen reader to, to read web pages, what that screen reader is going to do, it's going to come along, it's going to read all this lorem ipsum, and then it's going to suddenly say the letter O. Apropos of nothing. Uh, no context around it. It's better if you just, or I've heard, it's better if you just use a class of data icon, the screen reader won't read it. The other thing you could add to this is area hidden hidden oh, equals true just to be sure that the screen reader isn't going to read that letter O or isn't going to read this HTML content uh, regardless use class or use data icon some other attribute instead of just using uh, an actual character within those elements so the screen reader spits it a random letter okay that's my comparison between Ico Moon and Fantastic there are other services you could do like font Hello, uh, and I haven't played around with this, but right away visually it's good. it looks a lot like the other services. Uh, I'm going to test this out now in the meantime while I upload this video. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. See ya.